Hey everybody, it's Ryan Sessions again. In this video, we're going to be finishing up our dependencies, um, more so for the client side. So in the last video, we had our NuGet dependency that we added to serve up static files on the web server. Uh, in this video, we'll be adding our dependencies for our client side, such as JavaScript, TypeScript, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, before we do that, um, I want to show you something that I installed into my Visual Studio. So when you're working on client, um, client-side technologies, uh, Visual Studio has something here called Task Runner Explorer. Um, one of the things that this does is it's kind of like the compile button up here when you do the uh, build or run for Visual Studio, but instead of compiling server-side code such as C Sharp um, or Visual Basic, what this does is it bundles and packages and uh, transpiles all your client-side technologies. So uh, people that have used Grunt or Gulp or um, anything like that in the, in the past, they've, they're familiar with task runners. Um, the one that everybody's using today is called Webpack. It kind of does everything for you. Uh, it's a little bit stronger than Grunt and Gulp. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to get used to at first because you have this huge configuration file and, and I'll show you that later, but, but there is a task runner specific to Webpack. So if you go to this URL right here, you can find it in the Visual Studio Marketplace. Uh, once you have this installed, it will pick up your Webpack configuration and it will be able to run it with your task runner so that you don't have to do any command line stuff. I'm kind of a lazy programmer. I really like the, the GUI atmosphere where you can click buttons instead of write out a whole bunch of command line. I use that for Git. I use that for Visual Studio. I use that for um, and anything I need, even with this package manager console. I, I, I try to stay away from that if I can. So, all right, let's jump into this. So the first thing that we're going to add is we're going to add a package.json file. And what this is going to do is it's going to reach out into um, npm, which is the node package manager. Um, it's a repository of dependencies that sits online that we can go and, and pull uh, third-party code that we need. So we'll go ahead and we'll look in here and there should be a template in here. So an npm configuration pile, it's called package.json. Um, you need to keep it named package.json, don't change the file name. So we're going to go ahead and change the name of our application. So this is Angular Tutorial. Um, one of the things I've learned is it doesn't like any capital letters in that name. So if you try and put capital letters in there, it's not going to like it. Um, you see here we have something called dev dependencies. There's two, two major parts of package.json. There's dependencies and there's dev dependencies. And the difference between them is the dependencies are for things that need to get deployed with your application, so they're your dependents on runtime. Your dev dependencies are only your dependents that need to be there during compile time or build time. So, um, for instance, for dev dependencies, what we're going to be adding in here is our types because we need to tell our TypeScript transpiler what type of uh, variables we're going to be using. So. We're going to be using some core JS types. And I'm just going off of another project here that I, I recently built, so I have all the all the um, updated versions. So actually, you guys don't care to see me type all of these out, so I'm just going to copy all of these over. Here's the dev dependencies I'm using, and I'll just go over them one by one. We have a couple types dependencies, so this tells us when we get a variable of a specific type in TypeScript, this is this tells us how to treat that variable. Um, we have the actual TypeScript dependency tells that that does the compilation from TypeScript to JavaScript. Um, for those of you who don't know about TypeScript, TypeScript is a Microsoft language that wraps JavaScript. So you can have a TypeScript file and write JavaScript in it if you want. Um, but if you're a C Sharp developer like I am, you're used to writing code a specific way. And TypeScript um, looks more like C Sharp than it does JavaScript. So you can write TypeScript and it will compile into JavaScript. Webpack, this is what I was explaining earlier, uh, it kind of replaces Grunt and Gulp. Um, it does all your bundling, your minification, uh, your deploying, your, your um, transpiling, and everything. So this is kind of um, your workhorse for your project. 
Then within Webpack, you have things called plugins and loaders. Um, everything here below Webpack is a loader or a plugin for Webpack. The difference between the two is a loader works on a specific um, file type ex uh, uh, extension or file name, and a plugin will work all across all your files that you're using within Webpack. So we have our TS loader. This loads our, our TypeScript files. We have our Angular router loader. Um, and if you hover over these, it gives you a little bit more of a description. But what it does is it, it does our module loading for when you when you type in a route for Angular, it will it will load that module for you. Um, we have a, a HTML Webpack plugin. What this does is it takes an HTML template that we put in our our project, and it will um, do everything that System JS used to do for us. Um, so it will inject all of our Webpack JavaScript uh, script tags into that index.html so that way if we add another bundle to our webpack we don't have to then go change our index.html it will automatically add those and you'll see some how, how some of this stuff works later um, we're minifying our html uh, minifying is the process of taking out white space from your source files so that um, you're not loading so much data across the internet because uh, it's very expensive to to transmit that data across the internet as far as time and cost, so it's it's just always best to try and um, try and minify that. So something that you guys might be familiar with is kind of like zip files. Um, you know, it, it just compresses the file down. We have file loaders, so this this allows our um, Webpack JavaScript to um, reach out and grab static files, similar kind of to our NuGet dependency that we added. It's it's works kind of the same way, but um, this one's more for the client side. So we have Node SAS. This serves up our SAS files. Um, SAS is a wrapper for CSS, much like TypeScript is a wrapper for JavaScript. I won't bore you with that the details, but it's the same concept. Um, we have something that will load our, our SAS files, um, load our CSS files that are compiled from our SAS files. Um, we'll extract some CSS into separate bundles so that everything's not bundled into one. Um, load raw files. We'll clean the directory before we deploy files in there so that way we don't have orphan files that aren't being used. And then we have a notifier plugin that tells us when Webpack is done. Um, during this task runner explorer while it's running so we'll go ahead and save that these are all so as a reminder dev dependencies are everything that you need to build your application but not everything you need to to necessarily run your application so now we're going to copy in the dependencies for running the application this is where you get into your angular stuff so just like how .NET got split up into several different packages and they called it .NET Core, Angular d uh, did the same thing. So now you have several different Angular packages so that if you're not using them, you don't have to import them, you don't have to load them into your browser, and you don't have to waste all that, that computation time. We're going to be using these um, for the most part. I think the only thing we're really not going to be using is uh, probably the forms and maybe the compiler but it, it's okay. We can keep those in there. Um, we'll have RxJS. Um, these are the React extensions. Uh, this handles um, our data transmission if we're calling a web service. Um, Zone.js, uh, I'm not sure exactly what this does. Unfortunately, Angular depends on it, and it doesn't come packaged in Angular, so you guys have to put this in here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Core.js, uh, this is your built-in JavaScript stuff that the browser naturally understands. So this allows us to use um, regular JavaScript functions such as um, your array map or uh, your object properties and stuff like that. Um, we have a reflect metadata. Um, this assists Angular um, with the metadata that we do. So as you see, we're building this Angular app. Um, what happens is we have to decorate our classes and stuff with components and modules and stuff like that. And what, what that does is it takes the metadata, such as the tag selector or a link to a CSS file or this, that, and the other. And, and this is the JavaScript package that does that. jQuery, we're still using it today. <laughs> I haven't used it in this app, but I have it in there just in case I need it or just in case something else needs it um, that is a dependency. So 
Um, I'm using Bootstrap for my styles because I'm not a graphic artist, so I, I try and use what's out of, out of the box there. Um, on top of Bootstrap, I'm applying a, a CSS theme, uh, a SAS theme uh, called Bootswatch. You guys can go and Google Bootswatch and see some of the built-in um, Bootstrap themes out there. And then for icons, um, once again, I'm not a, web de uh, a graphic designer, so I, I use Font Awesome for my icons. All right. So now that we have our package.json, what does this do? Okay, we have a link to all of our client-side dependencies, but how do we get them? So in, what you could do is you could come down here in the package manager console, and by default, it's gonna link up to your solution. So you're gonna wanna drop down into your actual project. So if you type CD and hit tab, you'll see you can come down here to Angular tutorial. That's the, the folder that was created for this project. Hit enter. Once it goes in there, you can do npm install, and it will install all of those dependencies. I'm not going to do that because I'm not a command line person, so I try and use this for last resort. So if something doesn't work, you can always resort to that, but I try and, I try and click buttons first. So first, if you come up here, you click on your project and you say show all files, you'll see there's a node modules folder. In here, these are all the all the items that were in that package.json. So as we as we save that package.json, it automatically installed all those dependencies for us. What we could do though, just to make sure that there's nothing missing and everything is up to date, is we're going to right click the package.json. We're going to say restore packages. Down here in the bottom left, you say you see it's installing packages. Installing packages complete. Simple as that. You don't have to remember npm install command line. So next up, um, I'll go ahead and make a different video for this since this one took a while to explain all the dependencies in the package.json. But uh, the next video will be the tsconfig.json that configures our TypeScript compiler and our Webpack config uh, JS. We'll, we'll start building that out. So until then, if you guys have any questions, comments, am I rambling too much? Uh, just let me know, and I'll try and make these videos better. These videos better as I go along. So go ahead and leave comments in the comment section, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.